rugby with pads? I don't think so. American football in the UK is more popular than ever. Around 30,000 people from 182 clubs play at least once a month. So why is America's most popular sport making such a big impact this side of the Atlantic? I've always watched American football, always on Sky Sports, where I mates around late at night, watch Super Bowls and stuff, played a lot of American, Madden and American football game, and uh, just sort of stand there and thought I'd give it a go. I started playing for my university team. I, uh, I saw the other team when I went there, enrolled, tried out and got in, so that's my first experience. If one person mucks up on at the level on the field, a play will go dead straight away, says everybody's got to club together, everybody's got to get together, and that just then, off the field, breeds a good relationship. Well, I started uh, towards the end of last season when they were still in a, an associate club, but before they were in the league, uh, didn't play any games, and then uh, came back in January when they did the big recruitment drive. And uh, to hopefully start playing again a bit later this year. So we've got a really good core group of people that that all know each other, all get along, and we've all been working hard together for years. So it's really easy to come and slot into that when when you're new. I got into it about 20 odd years ago at school um, when it first came on Channel 4, um, and literally just my brother was into it. He said, "Oh, you know, pick a helmet kind of colour that you like," and I, I ended up going for the red and gold of the 49ers. So. Um, followed them ever since really um, and just recently got back into it now because the, the storm are here so in, in training you can hit each other really hard um, and it's always a case of you know give the hand to get back up and and it is really because it's very much a team game all 11 players on the pitch at any one time are vitally important to what happens in the game so it's you can't let your teammates down as well so it's very very sort of camaraderie driven definitely um, I had a couple of friends that was coming here previously about two years ago and then from there I come along with them a couple of training sessions and I just caught the bug. Um, I, I play everything, football, baseball, rugby, I've played a little bit of. Anything. And how does this compare to those? Um, it's a bit harder, it's a bit bit more crash bang wallop <laughs> in that sense. But yeah, yeah, I love it. Swindon Storm are one of the newer clubs that have cropped up in recent years. They were only established a few years ago, but they've gone from strength to strength this season being admitted to the British American Football League for the very first time. One man has almost single-handedly made this happen. Steve Bennett is a former Great Britain American football star with nearly two decades of experience in the sport. So what possessed him to start a team from scratch? Well, it all started um, in 2007 when my, uh, my boss at work uh, give me a poke in the shoulder and said, uh, you play this American football, right, don't you? I've got my son and his mates are obsessed with the sport. They're throwing the football around every lunchtime, coming home with torn school trousers and they can't, don't stop talking about it. Uh, do you want to coach them up? And at the time I was playing for the Bristol Aztecs and coaching UWE Bullets, the university team. Um, I'd also been playing for like 15 years at that point and played international youth and adult football. So I took that experience um, and started the Swindon Storm. Um, literally booked a, uh, a sports hall in, in Wooten Bassett, which is the, the little town just outside Swindon where all these kids were. Put a couple of posters, put a couple of posters up in the uh, community centre and um, in the local gym. Uh, and at the school, had 30 kids turn up uh, on the first session, all crazy for the sport, throwing the football around, we had loads of fun, and it's just, it's just gone from there, basically. Steve has been instrumental in ensuring Swindon Storm are the team they are today. But what's his vision for the club? Yeah, sustainability is the biggest thing, and uh, it's the infrastructure of the club that will help it survive. From my experience of working in other big clubs, the committee, they're the guys that make the team live for a long period of time. You can have the best coach in the world, but the day he walks out from the club, unless he's left a, a legacy to allow that club to continue growing, it's going to really struggle. And it would be great to see a young up-and-coming coach from another team bring new ideas in, and that would allow me to step back from the hands-on head coach role and let the team move on to its next generation and to see it become a sustainable product without me having to sort of do a daily grind on it basically. It's, it's going from strength to strength. It really is that the, the, I'm so excited because every, every training session we're getting better. Uh, the guys are listening to what I'm saying. Um, I, I don't teach 
particularly complicated things. We, we, I expect every player to be able to do three or four things well. And if you can do three or four things well, we'll be a productive offence and a productive defence. And that's all we need to work on, really. So the guy's really buying into that. There's little doubt what Steve means for this football team. And the players are unanimous in praise for their head coach. He started it as a youth team a few years ago. Um, and gradually sort of built up and built up and built up to, to where we are today and the amount of hours that he has to put in um, that behind the scenes that a lot of people don't see certainly sort of the admin and getting us into the league and, and prep and planning every every training session's planned to you know to the nth degree um, with everything in mind so steve's massive he proved last week his knowledge against bournemouth he ran a scout d here and we were running it so when we went into the game and it was spot on. If without his knowledge, we wouldn't be getting anywhere near where we are now. We wouldn't be in the leagues and we wouldn't have a chance in any of the games. His commitment to the club is absolutely incredible. Like he does so much work, like puts in so many hours of his own time, like getting getting us all the information we need to know, getting us like training routines and stuff for when we're at the gym, just putting so much, so much time and, and like effort into to making this work over the last like four or five years. So he's he's instrumental to, to this club. The amount of hours that he puts into this team is just unbelievable. It's like, <laughs> if he could, he'd be out here every night with us. His missus won't let him. Though. But yeah, he lives. He is one of the ones that lives and breathes it. Like he, he bleeds football through and through. Like, if he could play now, he would be. Like, I've seen him come to training and just have a helmet on, no pads or nothing, and tackle people. Like, you don't want to have a Steve Bennett tackle put on you. Trust me, it's one of the worst feelings in the world. So, what kind of attributes do you need to play the game? You just need the the mindset to get better. You you can come in as a clean slate, not know anything, and within a year, two years, you could be one of the not the top, but you could compete at the level that we're playing at Div Two at the moment and be fine. Does any player any size can come and play? We've got some of the smallest people on this team give the biggest hits. So. Uh, you can have any attributes because it requires big people, small people, fast people, and the slower people, because um, you've got the line you need to stop people and the, the, the backs you need to run and quick and be able to catch. So there's just about a position for everyone, really. So. You can be the fastest guy in the world, but if you don't know the playbook and run in the wrong direction, you're no use to me. I'd much rather have a guy that is not as athletic but turns up every training session, knows the playbook inside out, because the chances are he's going to be on the right part of the field at the right time. And what do the players think of the accusation that it's just rugby with pads? Uh, come give it a go. I hurt more the first time after I've done this than I ever did playing rugby. <laughs> come and try it. Um, it's, it's, it's not, it, it is an aggressive sport, but it's not necessarily as, as, as dangerous as it looks. We've got pads on for a reason. They're, they're safety equipment, not weapons. So um, it is there to, to, to protect you. Um, and not to start diving headfirst with your helmet, that's, that's not going to do you any good. But, um, but now come and give it a go, it's the best, the best, best way to find out. They might be amateurs, but the commitment shown towards this sport is something else. There's, there's guys here that like live and breathe the sport, they'll go home later on tonight and watch game tape of this, like we're taping this. They'll go home and study our training video. They'll study the video of the Bristol game that we got this weekend. So there's people that live and breathe it and they just can't get enough of it, isn't it? It is, and it's very much down to as much commitment as you can provide. Um, I was lucky I was able to go down and scout the game, the opponents for this, this Sunday's coming game, um, because I had the Saturday free, I was able to do it and wanted to do it um, to get as much information as you can. So it's very much, if you've got the time, sort of put in what you can. Absolutely, it's still at a very amateur level and you compare it to the, to the American way of doing things, it's very, very, very amateur in the way, but it's getting better all the time and now it's a university funded sport, so it's only going to progress from here and get more and more people involved. Um, and then there's a lot of clubs around the country, so literally from, from right down south up into the north of Scotland, there's, there's teams everywhere. So. There is a lot of commitment, I mean, as well as training, you've got to go to the gym a lot to keep your body fit and working, get stronger, otherwise it's so, it is a lot of commitment for a sport. A regular season NFL game has been played at Wembley since 2006. And it's here to stay, with the Jacksonville Jaguars confirming one home game will be played in the UK at least until 2016. That's in addition to the annual game held at Wembley each year. Brits certainly have the appetite for the sport, with both this season's games already sold out. And the NFL has got big plans for the sport over here. Viewing figures have risen by a staggering 154% since 2006, and there's even been talk of a franchise being established here but not everyone's convinced. I don't think it will work. There's a big market for it over here, but I can't see it happening anytime soon, to be honest. But if there was a team in London, then yeah, I'll go. I'll try to go watch games, but logistically, I don't think it will work. It's a long way for other teams to travel. Uh, personally, I don't I don't think they will be able to, to set up a, a home team in, in the UK. It's just, it's just too much effort for the, the away teams in, in the American League to come all the way over to the UK. 
But as a as like a two three game spectacle, it's, it's incredible. I think it's a possibility. The difficulty is taking one of those teams out of America because the people in, that support them in America aren't going to be happy about that. So whether there's a case for an expansion at some point and they can bring in a UK team based in the UK um, to be able to do that, then it's a possibility. But they're, they're having two games a year here anyway at Wembley, and that's probably gonna, that's going to continue for the near future. So um, yeah, it's only going to be more and more popular. Um, with regards to a franchise in the UK, I think logistically it would be impossible. The vast majority of people that support American football in the UK already have their team. They support their team since they were probably five, six, seven years old. For example, a Miami's Dolphin fan who's been a fan since 1985 isn't going to stop being a Miami Dolphins fan to support this new London franchise. Logistically, it's almost impossible. I think we are we're at the peak of what we're going to achieve from having the NFL in Wembley. American football is not likely to knock football or soccer off its perennial perch in the UK, but with people like Steve Bennett around, it looks certain to continue leaving its mark here.